Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the two new pieces of equipment that you can now equip to tanks that came with 7.0 and that is the traction system and the advanced powertrain. Now what do they do? Well they increase the traction system, increases the max speed of a tank by 10% and the chassis and hull rotation speed by 10% and the advanced powertrain increases the speed by 5% with a max horsepower increase of five percent now these pieces of equipment could lead to some fun builds some meme builds so like you could make a minotaur or a kb5 faster and make it so it rams quicker you could put it on the ram panzer and meme with that make it again go quicker ram harder but is it necessarily good for the game now no, I don't think it is. Not for the World War Two section. For the for the Cold War section, they could be pretty. They, well, they are pretty decent because most tanks in the Cold War section go over fifty. You know, they all go fifty, sixty, seventy kilometers an hour. So having this these advanced powertrains and stuff like that will be really good for them, and it will help them. It'll help, help level the playing fields at points in Cold War. But in World War Two, they're not so good. Now the T fifty dash two is one of these tanks that is it's just. It, it makes it sort of stupid because you can get it up to 83 kilometers an hour with just these two pieces of equipment with the fuel as well it goes up to about 86 somewhere out in that region which is just nutty it's just crazy and it's, it's really not balanced and the snake bite for instance goes up to 88 kilometers an hour it's going back to the future but Actually, it goes at 92 kilometers an hour because we've put fuel on and fuel is another thing that adds to speed it increases the speed of a tank by 5%, which, yeah, and then you add that whole rotation speed as well, or turret rotation speed as well. It just makes everything crazy. Like, this snake bike going at 92 kilometers an hour is just mental. Honestly, it's crazy. It's kind of fun at first to whiz around in this tank, just like an absolute lunatic. But then it's kind of like, well, this is just kind of ridiculous really let's be honest it's, it's not balanced like not many tanks can deal with it the vanguard for instance can go at if we go have a look at it the vanguard goes at 80 kilometers an hour but with fuel 84 kilometers an hour when you're whizzing around in this thing it's honestly mental it makes this tank even stupider than it is already and yeah, the, the, this new piece of equipment just aren't balanced, and I'll t I'll tell you why. Okay, the straight percentage buffs that these two pieces of equipment give is what is broken about it, and the reason it's broken is because that if you have a tank that is already quick, these pieces of equipment are going to make it ridiculously quick. But if you have a slow tank, take the mouse for example. If we go have a look at the mouse. Where's Mousy? We need to go through these filters, go to the Germans. Mousy, Mousy! 20 kilometers an hour. So the mouse goes at 20 kilometers an hour. If I was to put both pieces of equipment on this tank, which my silver, my poor, poor silver is going to hurt right now, we are going to put both pieces of equipment on this tank. We got to 23 kilometers, we gained 3 kilometers an hour for these two pieces of equipment, which is not something I could recommend because the, like, a tank like the mouse needs something a little bit extra as well. So, like, it'll need sort of the vert stabs and stuff like that to try just help it a little bit help the gun and the optics as well obviously and you're not going to want to drop those but you've gained three kilometers an hour that's poor that's all you've gained but if i'm to put it on because of the straight increase basically with these pieces of equipment 10 percent so we take the snake bite for instance goes at 80 kilometers an hour 10% of the 80, 80 kilometers an hour that the snake bike gets is 8 kilometers an hour. It gets up to 88 kilometers an hour, whereas this tank only gets 2 because it goes at 20. These pieces of equipment could have been absolutely fantastic. It could have been like PC's rotation device, you know, that could have been fantastic to help slow tanks. It could have helped the mouse. It could have helped something like the T95. It could have helped the tortoise a lot and just made them a little bit more bearable at times, you know, it, because it doesn't have to be a major, major increase. It could be like six kilometers an hour, and this tank going in at 26 instead of 20 would be brilliant. But if I equip those pieces of equipment, all I can get is three kilometers an hour extra. And if I put fuel on it as well, then I also gain one extra kilometer an hour, and I only go at 24. 
But I've got to sacrifice so, so much to do that that it's just not viable on on these tanks like that. On the slow tanks, you just you need both pieces of equipment to make it viable. And even then, it's not viable. And you sacrifice far too much to make the tanks go like that. But on the fast tanks, you don't even need both pieces of equipment. You can just equip one of them and you make it rapid. And it's just not balanced like that. What they should have done, and what I hope they'll do, is they'll either remove the pieces of equipment for World War Two, or they'll change them. Now, I actually pref I wouldn't want them removed. I actually want them to change the pieces of equipment. The max horsepower boost, fine. Boost the horsepower of tanks. Make it so that they get up to top speed quicker. That, that's perfectly fine. And sometimes... That's what tanks need. Sometimes they don't need the speed boost. and Sometimes they just need that horsepower boost, you know. But make it so that they are straight buffs to speed per class if you're going to do it. But I would remove it so that you can't put them on light tanks. Light tanks are fast enough as it is. Medium tanks, you make it so that they gain an extra 3 or 4 kilometers an hour. And they also gain an extra 10% horsepower or something like that. And for heavy tanks, you make it so that it's like 5 or 6 kilometers an hour, again, with the extra horsepower boost. And for TDs, yeah, you're probably looking at a couple of kilometers an hour. I don't know. That's down to the balance gods, right? But to be honest, I'd also just make it so that you can have straight increases instead of percentages. But also limit it to tanks that go between 25, you know... Tanks that go below 25 to 35 kilometers an hour, I'd probably say. Because it, it, when you get any faster than that, you're just making tanks just quicker for the sake of it. And it's, it's not really good for the balance of the game. But if you could give something like this Demolisher, for example, a boost, you know, make it just that little bit quicker, that'd be, you know, that'd be quite nice. And it's, it'd be quite a novel thing. You could just think, you know what, I'll drop the camo nut on this Demolisher, which I don't really need on Demolisher because it's an assault, heavy, it's assault TD. I could drop it. And go, oh, you know what, I'll give it 10% extra speed and make it turn quicker as well, which is nice. And then it gets 33 kilometers an hour. And, yeah, okay, if it was a straight buff of 5 kilometers an hour, I could get up to 35 kilometers an hour, you know. And it makes it 35 and it breathes a bit of new life into it. And it'd help tanks like, say, the Bone Shaker, the TS-5 or the T-28, you know. At the minute... They're just not worth equipping on these tanks, like, because you just don't gain enough from it. And you gain far, far too much on tanks that really don't need that speed boost. Like, the snake bite is just mental with how quick it is. And I really kind of hope, as much as the pieces of equipment could be fun, they do need changing for balancing reasons and stuff like that. And like I say, it just breaks tanks. If we look at the Rampanzer, for example, at tier 5... I think you can get that up to something stupid. So this can go up to, I believe it's 65 kilometers an hour, maybe a bit quicker than that with the fuel. And that's just nuts. That's just nuts. It doesn't need, it doesn't need that at the tier. Like that is, this tank's already nutty enough. And if you think about at tier 10 with the machine, the machine, look, if it has 73 kilometers an hour with just the traction system. If I was to remove the vert stabs and put powertrain on as well, we get up to 77 kilometers an hour. If I was to put fuel on this, it's probably 80 over that. Honestly, that's nuts. It does not need that. No, we just don't need this in the game like that. And honestly, like I said, that's why I would restrict it because lots of tanks that are already really quick and are probably a little bit too powerful already because they're fast and they have everything... It just breaks them, and it's not good for the game. Saying that, I'm going to give you some advice, because even though they are not a good piece of equipment for the game, for the World War II section anyway, like I said, for the Cold War section, probably alright, to be honest, because, say, the American Era 2 tanks are quite slow, they don't really keep up as much with the Russian ones, you can boost that up and make them just that little bit quicker. Because also they have better guns, generally. So, yeah. But anyway, in... The World War II section, if you're going to equip it, I would say equip the equipment on tanks that don't need to be sacrificing stuff. So, really, the vents on this makes everything a little bit better on the 30B, right? But the gun's so good, I don't need vert stabs. I could decide, you know what, I'm going to drop the vents and make this tank turn a little bit quicker and just go a little bit quicker. 
and it gives it a little bit more oomph. And that's that's something I can do. I could probably make the bat chat quicker, which do it doesn't need to be, but I could make it that little bit quicker by dropping the camo net and putting it on. Because the camo net makes it, you know, pretty stealthy uh, medium tank, which it is like a medium light light tank in it. But, you know, it's pretty stealthy medium. I could decide, you know, I'll drop the camo net and put the rotation, not the rotation device, the traction system or the advanced powertrain on here, you know. So tanks that, honestly, you're not going to sacrifice too much to put them on, I would probably do it to be honest like the gorilla i wouldn't now the gorilla doesn't have the best of camo but that means it needs all the help it ga can get because it's a paper td you always want to have optics to make view range as good as possible and the ram just makes the dpm better which is what you want to be doing so like on the vk 7201k you wouldn't do it although it is slow anyway so you, you just don't get the benefit out of it the leopard might think about it because it's got 65 km an hour top speed you might remove the vents and put the traction system on and therefore if we did that you get that ish, extra 10% speed boost because it's got a good power to weight already you get 71 kilometers an hour E50M E50M makes it quicker makes it more maneuverable if you put on the traction system it's already got a decent power to weight so if you make it so that you can rotate the hull quicker which is something it's not as good at and you get that extra 6 km an hour top speed fantastic but like I say, if you thought about it on something like the Ramatar Panzerwagen, which already goes at 75 kilometers an hour, it's one of the fastest tier 10 light tanks, you go, I mean, you wouldn't because really the gun needs the vert stabs and you want to have optics and you want to make the DPM better, really. But if I was to do it, I could do this, put the traction system on. And in fact, actually, that's the only, that's the only piece of equipment I can put on this tank because it would make it too quick. I think that's pretty much what they've done. Is they've capped it because yeah they've capped some of them like that if they make it too quick so you can only put that piece of equipment on this light tank and that makes it 82 kilometers an hour if I was put fuel on it you're probably looking at 86 which is just nuts that's just weight that's just mental generally so yeah I honestly think these pieces of equipment are bad a bad 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 for the game for the World War Two section and need adjusting. Like I say, I d I'm not necessarily for the removal. I'm more for change them, make them, limit them to slower tanks, or limit them to slower tanks, make them just work better for the slower tanks. Because sometimes they do need a little bit of love. Sometimes they're a bit obsolete. Not obsolete, but they just feel painful, right, to play. And imagine, right, the new maps. The new maps are a key point to this as well. In that you're playing your mouse. You're playing the mouse, you're trundling along, you go, oh, you know what, I'm going to take my mouse out, I'm going to take my, my mousey out. And you get Cowbang, Malaheim, Fredvang, or Desful, Desful especially. How big and open that map is, 1400 by 1400, the mouse just struggles. It will struggle along, it, you will struggle to get to the fight. If the fight happens on the opposite side of the map, you are never getting there. Some of the other maps in World War II mode, you might actually still get to the fight and be able to affect things. But if you go the wrong way, which who knows what the wrong way is at the minute, you're just not going to get anything done. and you Or you might get dunked on, you know. So it would help the slower tanks, especially with the brand new maps that have come out. But like I say, they, they also help the speed of the fast tanks. Which means that on the new maps as well, it helps them dominate even more than they should on those maps. So yeah, that that's my thinking behind the new equipment system. Like I say, the new equipment system come with some very fun builds and some very meme -y builds. Like I say, like on the Minotaur, for example, which is a very heavy tank and it's also pretty quick. And I know Mr. Sidescrape will be happy with this one because... I put both on it, I can get up to 46 kilometers an hour. I should put fuel on it as well and have the meme, remove the food. But I kind of want to keep the food. But you can get this up to like 49 kilometers an hour, I think it is, with the food, with the fuel in. And when you go in at nearly 50 in this heavy thing, I, like I rammed a dragon the other day, not the other day, yesterday, sorry. I played this tank, rammed a dragon for about 500, going at about 46 kilometers, I think it was 46 kilometers an hour, this top speed. It can be really memey and quite funny, but like I say, 
it just breaks the tanks that are already ridiculously quick, which is not good. I mean, you think about poor Tog. Poor Tog could do with these little boosts as well, and poor Tog will gain absolutely nothing from those two pieces of equipment. You gain about two kilometers an hour, which is just very sad and makes Tog a very, very sad panda. So, I am actually going to show some gameplay as well. I'm going to go and show you two games that I had in the snake bite, which kind of just shows how mad it is with these two pieces of equipment and how crazy it is. Like I say, it, at first it's kind of fun, but then you kind of go in, oh, this is just a bit, this is just a bit ridiculous, really. This shouldn't be happening. So I'm going to send you over to the replays. You, you watch it and see what craziness we could get up to, and I'll see you there. So here we are on the replays with the snake bite. And we're in a platoon in this first one with Swindle and with Lee. And we're in the snake bites. We've got the full setup going. We've got the fuel. We've got the traction system. I think it's the traction system that we can equip on this. And we're just going to blitz it at 92 kilometers an hour. I mean, just look how quickly we get up to speed. Look how look how quick we're going generally. I mean, the snake bite was already a quick tank. It does not it does not need these speed boosts. But we're just zooming like. We're going up a hill, we're going on, on a hill here, we're going at nearly the top speed, the standard top speed of the snake bite. And what I'm planning on doing is just basically zooming and rounding circles over here. And you're going to see some ridiculous shots in this game, <laughs> honestly. Like, we're travelling at full eight, we're full sending, full 82 kilometers an hour, full 90 to whatever you want to say. And we're just going to be RBRTing people, aiming the odd shot here and there, and we're going to hit some just silly shots that we shouldn't ever hit now Lee's going in on this Ram 2 and it's kind of like you know what I'm gonna come help you Lee we're gonna pull a little drift that we didn't mean to do and look we're going we're just going at mad speed sliding about we actually hit that shot which is mental and it's just so hard for people to actually hit you when you're traveling at this speed because not everyone can lead that well and when a tank is just swiveling about because this this tank turns on a sixpence because of the traction system with its 10% extra track traverse and the fuel as well boosting us up with the horsepower and stuff like that it just means you just, you really do just spin round on on a circle you know in a circle dead quick and you travel so quickly if you just keep your movements unpredictable people will struggle to hit you and it's something that you can do in the vanguard as well which is just dirty and it just it'll lead to more stupid plays by people in fast tanks which already happens a lot and you see this sort of thing but in tanks that really shouldn't do it but with the new equipment they can do it a little bit better and people will just go zoom zoom because they can go zoom zoom right um we are just kind of wolf packing these guys at the minute and like i say while it while it's kind of fun at first that you're going at these sort of speed and just whizzing about yeah, it's 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 not it's not good for the game, honestly. The one thing I am happy about with 7.0, though, I mean, there's a lot that come with 7.0 that's pretty good, and one of them is the old HP bars above the tank. You don't realise how much you've missed something until it's back in the game and you're back playing with it. Honestly, it's it's great. There's another new feature which you'll notice when we lock on as well. There's actually a queue or a but yeah, if it's a visual cue that you'll notice just above the HP bar, when we auto-aim at people, it's just there now. It's a locked-on symbol. That'll actually tell you when you're locked on to people now and when you're not. So if you didn't know, you, you'll now know. But you're seeing we're just literally memeing about, zooming around. I ran, ran that guy, which is not always advised. And that guy hadn't... He just... He, he didn't stand a chance. Their team just did not stand a chance. And we, we, hit, we hit that shot because, yeah balance and again balance and we ricocheted but we hit <laughs> is honestly so so crazy that th these tanks can do this like i said i mean the snake bike could do this anyway at 80 kilometers an hour but that extra 12 kilometers an hour that this tank can do now is just absolutely crazy and it's not something that it's not something that should be a thing honestly it's really not so we ended up finishing top three there. I mean, 1400, 358, it's not that great for a snake bite, but it kind of just showed the mad, mad gameplay that you could do. I mean, that, 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 I mean, to be fair, the snake bite is an extremely extreme example because it is one of the fastest tanks in the game. But the fact that you can do this, it, and people might go, well, people aren't going to do this because it's, 
you know, they've got to sacrifice too much. Same as when I was showing you the machine in the garage. People will go, oh, they won't go up to 80 kilometers an hour. They won't remove all those pieces of equipment and put fuel on just for the speed boost. You know, they've got to sacrifice too much, like the vert stabs and stuff for it. Well, people will. People will do it. And it'll just, like, 80 kilometers an hour on a machine is just... It's mental. Like, that's just not something that should happen, honestly. So this was actually my first game in the snake bite with this new piece of equipment, and I played it on stream. If you watch the full stream highlight, the, say the full stream highlight, the full stream upload, you will have seen this game, and some of the other games where I put some of the equipment on tanks like the 30B. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go mental. It was kind of like that last game that you saw with Swindle, me and Swindle and Lee, where we just went ham and just drove around in circles, basically, around their whole team, and they got wrecked. This game was another one that's kind of like that, in the fact that I just went, you know what, we're not really going to stop moving, we're just going to drive. We're going to drive into stupid places, see what we can muck about with at 92, km, 92 kilometers an hour, and just see what memes can be had. Now, obviously, you've seen how ridiculously aggressive I'm being right now. I'm, more, I'm almost in their base. I was thinking of going for the artillery, but then we spot a Rampanzer and a heavy tank, and I'm like, well, you know, obviously, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go head first into a heavy tank I will probably die so we're actually gonna back out and we're gonna go basically attack up the 4-5 line and you see just by ducking and dodging dipping and diving you know using the five rules of dodgeball we managed to avoid all the shells that was coming in from that TD and we're just gonna keep say it's just keep moving it's like just keep swimming just keep swimming you know and the Tiger P is the tank that's in my mind. I kind of want to get up behind this Tiger P, start pummeling shots into his back while he's preoccupied with the tanks that are at the front. But as we go in, we've got this VK3002M that's appeared in front of us. And you know what? I'm just going to... Actually, it's not an M. It's a 3002D even, which is the tier 7. And we're just going to, you know, go mental. We're going to just swivel around in circles at this guy. Because we can. We've got the speed, we've got the horsepower, we can go up hills at like 70 kilometers an hour if we don't sl slip and slide. And we can just keep doing silly things and getting up, going up and round. But now my friends are going in on this Tiger P, I'm just going to ignore the 3002M and go and try and shoot this guy. Now if you're seeing any micro stutters or just bad FPS, it was when there was the Xbox, Xbox Series S issue that they've resolved very quickly, thank God, because it was a pain in the backside. And yeah, if you didn't know in the first day when they released the update and you had an Xbox Series S and your FPS and your the micro stuttering was mentally bad, yeah, it was a bug and thankfully they fixed it so you could, it's safe to play. So now it's piggy time. We're going to go for the piggy. We get two in. We're going to try and shut this M44 down. Unfortunately, it misses. We hit him twice. That one flies over and we're going to try and make sure we probably aim a shell into him we get hit by the artillery it's another shell that was pretty much fully aimed misses which is it's just typical right you don't hit the shots that you aim but actually the sh shots that you auto aim and fire on the move easy easy so we're going to pop up here we're going to make sure it's aimed and we shut it down now there's just this poor little wolverine who's got the derp gun which he could pen me he could end my day if he hits me but the fact that i'm traveling at such speed and i can just duck and dive Means that it's going to really struggle to actually hit me. There's a couple of guys left still. The Styx tanks. There's this guy up on the hill that is an M56 Scorpion. And I'm thinking, you know what? Could I ram this guy? I I'm hitting this guy on the move because, you know, we missed all those shots nearly fully aimed on the artillery. But on the move shots at this guy, yeah, okay. Again, hit him on the move. It's like, right, we're going to ram him. Launch into him. Nearly lose all our health. Well, we do lose all our health, but we managed to shut down the M56. There's only three tanks left. We know where they are. They're down south, so it's time to get motoring. Now, the problem is we've just lost our driver. And to sacrifice, to get the fuel, we've actually sacrificed the med kit. So we can't put the driver back in, which is a bit awkward in a tank that is going at 92 kilometers an hour, granted. But for the most part, it's kind of worth it to be able to just get this stupid speed well, I, say, I mean if you want to do this sort of stuff it, it can I say it can be quite fun but honestly it's just game breaking really isn't it and it's not really much fun for the enemy team quite frankly and I, I really do hope that they rework these pieces of equipment 
and change it or just remove them from World War 2 but I don't want them to remove them I want them to change them so they benefit the slower tanks and they're not just out, outright crazy for the quicker tanks so as always everybody thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time like and subscribe A great success!